Rad? Hello. What's up, Rad? Hi. How's it going? Not much. How about you? Um, I'm, I'm chilling. I'm, uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a gecko. What's up with you, Rad? Um, I'm just chilling, too. Just wanted to tell you a story. Oh, please. Okay, I kind of just needed to get this story off my chest because I'm not really sure how to feel about it. Hit but us. When my friend and I, my best friend and I were 13, we went to this water park resort thing and we were floating down the lazy river together and no one was around. And she told me that she had to shit really bad. And I was like, okay, let's go to the bathroom. But she told me that she couldn't hold it and she couldn't make it to the bathroom. So she pulled down her bikini bottoms and she shit in the lazy river. And how did you respond to this? Well, I was right in front of her and you know, like lazy rivers have a current. So the poop started floating towards me mm. and like right in the nick of time, she scooped the turds up with her hand and threw it into the bush right next to the lazy river. She scooped the turd up with her head. Did the turd not, like, dissolve into the water a little bit? I don't know what the chemical composition is of turds, but I, I would think that it would, like, sort of dissolve into a little, like, diarrhea -y mist before. Was it, like, a fully solid thing? It was, like, it looked like, hmm, like little rocks. It wasn't, like, diarrhea -y. It was, like, solid. There was just, like, three of them, and she just cupped her hand kind of scooped them and tossed them. Okay, three little pebbles. Yeah. And the water didn't turn brown or anything. Mm. It just it was pretty a clean a clean poop. And did this in any way affect your relationship with your friend? No, not really. I it's kind of, mm, we're still best friends. It's very noble of you. We just don't really talk about this incident. It's probably for the best. But, but the story also gets worse. So, we went back in the lazy river, like thirty minutes later, which in hindsight is like we really probably shouldn't have done that because they're supposed to like shock the pool and stuff after someone shits in it. But when we got to where she shit it smelled really it smelled so bad but like for some reason we thought it was like really funny and she was feeling kind of bad about it and she was trying to convince me to shit in the lazy river so that she wouldn't do it alone you know mm -hmm. what do you think you, you would have done i next to the lazy river you shit next to the lazy river so where where was where was next to the lazy river was it on the edge was it in the bushes was it, it so it was not in the water it or did you stand the on the edge just... of the pool and then pull down your pants and squat <laughs> and shit in into the pool I did not shit in the pool. I squatted next to the pool and it was like in a bush right next to it. Mm. I just couldn't do it in the pool. I couldn't bring myself to do it, but I just wanted to be a good friend. And you did that just to make your friend feel better? Yes. That's nice. And also we thought it was funny. But I Can just I feel really guilty about it now. Oh, you feel, why do you feel guilty about it? Because someone had to clean it up or something, you know? That's true. Or, like, I just, I can't, I feel bad for whoever, like, discovered it, like, the employee. Do you think that makes it less funny? I kind of, like, yeah, now, now I think it makes it less funny now that I'm older. Hmm. What, what were you about to say just now? 
Um, I don't know. It, I was about to say that it keeps me up at night sometimes. Can I ask how old you were when this happened? We were 12 or 13. <laughs> hmm. And I'm not sure if that makes the story better or worse. <laughs> how old are you now? 21. If a similar incident happened at this current age, if you were with your friend and she shat in the lazy river and picked it up and threw it out, how would you react now? I don't think that I would shit next to the lazy river again. I think I would just get, offer her emotional support. Now, okay, this is a friend that you've been friends with for many, many years at this point. But let's say you as a 21-year-old uh, had a new friend that you've known for a relatively brief amount of time. And you went with them to the water park and they did the same thing. Would that change your relationship with them in any way? Or would you be very understanding about it? I would be shocked that it happened again. But... I feel like I might think a little differently of them because they're not 12 or 13 anymore. And maybe, I mean, if they had like a medical condition or something that mm. caused them to do that, then obviously I wouldn't judge them. But like just doing it for shits and giggles, like, literally, I don't know, <laughs> literally shits and giggles. Well, what'd you say her name was? Rad. Rad. Anything else you want to say to the people, Rad? Um, I'm really sorry to whoever found the shit. I feel really bad if you're out there. Thank you for calling, Rad. Um, Have the rest of the night. Uh, you too. Bye. <laughs> Hello, Anthony. Hello. Uh, hi. Hey, what's Thanks for up, having Anthony, me. Dude? Well, I had to have Not someone. Much. How are you? That's true. I'm glad I have you. I'm glad I have you too. So, Anthony, what's going on, man? Dude, not much. Just, uh, just happy it's the weekend. I got some news today. Oh, yeah? What's um, the news? I don't know how... Yeah, I don't know how to take it, like... Like, my girlfriend, uh, she told me that she kind of wants to bring, like, another female into the relationship. Mm. And I just don't know. Like, it, it sounds really cool on paper, but I don't know if I can handle it. Why don't you think that you can handle it? Well, I think, like, I think I might, like, I might just get, like, jealous that she might give this girl more attention. Hmm. Then, then she gives me. Mm. And I don't know if I can take it. Hmm. Um. Okay. So when she told you that when she brought this idea up to you, what did you first say to her? Well, I kind of just said like, "That's cool. Like, that sounds interesting." But as like time went on, like I, I just processed it, and I don't know. I think like. I would just like jealousy would just creep up, mm -hmm. and I I don't know if that would be a, a good thing for the relationship. Okay, did you tell her this? I did. Yeah, our communication is pretty solid. That's good to hear. What did she say? Uh, she kind of just said, "Don't." N there's nothing really to worry about, and uh, we kind of just figure it out as we went. So. Okay. She said, she said, we'll figure it out as we go. That's what she said? Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like, yeah, we'll just try it out and uh, just see what happens. Okay. All right. So are you – What's what, how would you rate your comfortability level in just trying it out? I don't – I mean, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll, I'll give it a shot. Okay. But, like, without knowing what this person – I don't – 
there's no person yet so there's not much to worry about but like if it does like if it does happen like i just don't know how it handle like what if this girl wanted me out of the picture what if like there's so many variables that could just change everything mm-hmm. and it's just like my anxiety is just through the roof so this is a tough one because you know if cuz i'm not, i'm not hearing from you that like you're anxious about it but you're in you're like like cuz like there's i feel like there there can there i feel like there can exist a it might be um, cool I feel, yeah, I feel like there can exist a... I feel like somewhere between... Fuck yeah, I'm super into this, let's do it, and no, absolutely not. I feel like there can exist a legitimate emotion of... I'm apprehensive, but willing to try it. You know? Oh, um, of course. Yeah. But, I don't, but I, don't, I don't... I don't know, man. I, I don't... I don't know. We haven't talked for super long, but that's kind of not what I'm... Here and I, and again, don't let me like influence your whatever thoughts about it. But that's kind of not what I'm hearing from you. Like, like okay, I've heard about your anxieties. Okay. I've heard about your apprehensions. But like, what? Tell me about. Tell me more about the the other half of you that is that is into this. You know what I'm saying? Like, are you are part are, well, are parts of, of this exciting to you? Sure, it, well, of course. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Exciting enough yeah, I mean, that you're you're willing to, you know. I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh yeah, yeah yeah. Give it a go. Yeah, sure. Okay. But there's there's the fear though that you know, uh, just something like negative could happen mm-hmm. out of this too. Like what we have is so great. So like, mm-hmm. I really don't know if I want to disturb it. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll say you know. Yeah, I don't know, man. It sounds like you have really good communication with your partner. And if that's the case, and if that remains the case, I feel like you don't have anything to worry about, you know, as long as you guys are keeping a good, oh my God. good line of communication. Oh, wow. I like that. Okay. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I feel I feel a little bit better about it. Yeah. feel pretty okay, chill. Cool. Do, you feel, do you feel like you have uh, the... Um, do you feel like you have the sexual... Um, Skill to please two women at once. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yes, of course. That's that's you know that that's the confidence we like to hear. I try. Yeah, I try. I try to be confident. What 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 uh, was it you were gonna ask me? Oh, nothing. I uh, I was gonna. I don't know. I was just gonna ask you what your. I don't know what your like favorite favorite food is. Just. Something random. I like uh, I like chicken tenders, not dipped in barbecue sauce, but tossed in it. Where like the whole chicken tender is covered okay. in barbecue sauce from the get go, yeah. and then you like can and then you can dip it into a into some ranch or blue cheese. Oh, that sounds rad! Thank so. you for calling, Anthony. Have a good rest of the night, Chelsea. Hello. What's up, Chelsea? Yes. How you doing, dog? Oh, laying in bed. Chelsea, Chelsea, you, uh, what do you want to talk about today? Hit me. Um, I don't know. He asked if I had any like cool stories, and I I thought of like some, I guess, while I was waiting. Um, but I'm an event photographer. I'm from Kansas. I mean, if mm-hmm. you have any questions about Kansas, uh, I probably could answer those. But uh, you know, I feel I like I like know like all I need to know shows. about Kansas. <laughs> you do. Currently. You do. Don't know a lot about Kansas, but definitely know enough about it. Yeah. I not mean, enough not... as in a sufficient amount, but enough as in, you know, it's enough. Enough. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I heard you split your um, eyebrow open. I, I like open. to go to like... I did. Um, well, I can't even like have a piece of like bone kind of like floating around. Um, I take like uh, photos at shows, like li- live music shows, and uh, I I got pushed from behind, and like the barricade was only like three, <laughs> like 
three or four inches off the ground. It's like a step, basically, onto the stage, and I got pushed from behind, and my head uh, got like went directly into the bass drum, and I I really cracked my head open, and uh, I later got arrested that night for um, a DUI, but I was not drunk. I had a concussion. <laughs> So they were driving under the influence they of did a let me go yeah they did let I didn't me know go that was though. illegal so well it's not I mean like they he let me go back to my car and he told me I should go to the doctor and I was like yeah I how did, did you get a DUI <laughs> did they like give you a no test he arrested me because he thought I was drunk yeah he thought I was drunk because I was leaving the bar t- at taking photos. And uh, my my pupils like weren't dilating correctly, and uh, you know like I had fallen, so like my knee was kind of injured. So he, he arrested me like on the field sobriety test. But when he took me back to the station and I like blew, he had me wait like 15 minutes or something and had me blow into the machine. And uh, turns out I I was still not drunk. So he had to drive me back to where he arrested me, and I drove home. <laughs> You are drunk on the, the I didn't powerful get charged concussion with a DUI. Oh, you were charged yeah, with a DUI? I mean, no, I was arrested for a DUI. I was not charged with a DUI. Mm. Yes. So, so, can I ask, at any point in time, did you tell the officer, like, I am not drunk, I just have a concussion? Yeah, I did. Yeah, absolutely. Like he it's like a good pulled me over like one block away, that. and he was like, he, "Yeah, go ahead." But it, I really was not drunk. <laughs> yeah, he only pulled me over like a block away from the bar, and he just assumed that uh, I had been drinking. And I told him that I was the event photographer for the, the local band at the bar, and that I had hit my head. You know, like my eye was like obviously swollen. Like it, I was bleeding. <laughs> and he, he did not, he wasn't having it. So did you go to the hospital shortly after this? As you were bleeding all over the jail I cell? do not. <laughs> I, I did not. I, uh, I do not have health insurance. So I just rested. <laughs> you rested? Yeah, well, I just rested, you know, like laid around, drank water. I had my friend with me to make sure, like, I was okay. Because you're totally, you're totally, you're not supposed to go to sleep, I heard. Well, um, yeah, I know, but I was also, I mean, I had to sleep at some point. I left the bar at like one thirty. Okay, so well, how do you but know that you had a after. concussion? She's a good friend. Um, well, like my, my pupils weren't dilated. I, I did have to go to the hospital later at like some point, but not, not immediately after. So you, so you were like holding out to go to the hospital cause you didn't I didn't think it was, I didn't think it was that serious, I guess at the time I didn't, I definitely knew like I was stunned, but I didn't think it was worth going to the emergency room over. So like once. Once I, I thought it was like a lot of makeup on my face as well and, and like eyeliner, but it was actually like my eye and like I had some like blood pooling and, you know, like in my, un, underneath my eye and my, my conjunctiva, which is like the white space all around your iris was all like bloodshot. And that, so I eventually did go to the doctor because I, I realized it was, that was not makeup and it was pretty bad. <laughs> But it, I went to like a walking clinic, not the emergency room. How long after you were injured did you go to the doctor? It was probably like, oh, gee, see, my memory is a little shoddy. I wonder why. <laughs> Around, I, I wouldn't say it was. It was less than two days. Okay. How much was how, how much was the bill when they eventually saw your head? Oh. I definitely did not pay any attention to it. I definitely did not pay it. Nice. I think I had to pay $75 to, like, be seen. But after that, you know, you, you like, get a bill, and I, I don't have money for that. 
I'm a production specialist. I make all kinds of like uh, labels and shit. I run a lot of machinery, like power cutters, and like I, I make like large books, printed materials. So I, I don't get paid a ton. Well, you know, look, if you don't have health insurance, be be damn careful around that heavy machinery. Yeah. Well, I think like. Uh, you know, at work, I would get workman's comp, so I'm I'm definitely careful uh, because it, it is uh, it is a little intimidating for sure. Hmm. What'd you say your name was? Chelsea. Chelsea. Oh, I got a name right. Chelsea, dude, thank you so much for sharing, yeah. and um, I hope your head feels better. How long ago was this? Um. Probably like a, maybe a year and a half. I'm good. I'm good for sure. All right. The head's doing well. I've definitely got better about uh, standing. Yeah. About learning where to stand and where not to stand. Because uh, I, I did like scoot or like her like kick drum back, you know, a little bit when I hit it with my head. So that was embarrassing too. Mm-hmm. Like, so definitely a learning experience. <laughs> well, I'm glad it was a learning experience. And uh, thank you for sharing, Chelsea. You're welcome. Have a great night, Lyle. You as well. Joe, is that you? Yeah, it's me. What's up, Joe? Uh, not a whole lot, man. Um, how's your night? Joe, tell me everything. Tell me nothing. You know, go crazy with me. It's, it's, um, it's good nuts. Well, basically, uh, I have a strained relationship with my sister, and uh, the source of the... Well, it's been going on for a long time, but uh, the nature of it is she kind of disagrees with my chosen profession. Mm -hmm. And... uh, you know, I think it kind of spills over from our parents a little bit, who also are not too enthused sometimes, but I think they've kind of come to peace with it. Mm-hmm. But uh, I think she still kind of holds a grudge over it. And uh, I'm just trying to figure out how to navigate it sometimes. Why do you think she has a problem with your profession? Uh, you know, I guess from her perspective, there's a moral dimension to it that, uh, a lot of people have a problem with, or some people, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And yet you're, how long have you been in this profession? Oh, well, as an amateur, you know, I started... I guess when I was 15 or 16, but as a paid professional, I started uh, in my early 20s. Mm-hmm. So for about nine, ten years now. And you told me that your parents initially were uh, shared your sister's sentiment and they weren't into it, but they've since come around. Uh, I, I wouldn't say they came around, but they kind of, uh, you know, they made their peace with us. Okay, they, they stopped hassling you. My choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they haven't asked about it mm-hmm. in a long time. Mm-hmm. And so I take that as a kind of an indicator that they're, uh, you know, that they've come to their own form of acceptance with it. And I, I appreciate that, I guess. Um you know, I certainly don't want to upset the apple cart on it or anything. It's not something I'm going to bring up. It's maybe in the back of their minds at times, you know. But my sister is much more overt in uh, in sort of uh, letting me know how she feels. Okay. What do you think about what you do? Uh, well, at times it's fun. It's rewarding. Uh, at other times I can understand their perspective you know it can get messy 
can get a little interesting, unique, uh, varied. Um, you know, the, the conditions are a little, uh, you know, they involve, uh, you know, I'm trying to be opaque here to sort of, uh, Uh, it involves a lot of uh, substances, a lot of a lot of substances. Okay. And so that kind of uh, uh, that can get a little weird, okay. you know. But, uh, uh, but I, I've built up a tolerance for it. You know, I can really, I can, I, I do well in that environment now. Let me ask you. Let but, me ask you two uh, things. This is this is a a a, a two part two prong question. I'm curious about. Do you think uh -huh. do you think that what you do helps people? And then prong two, does it even matter to you if what you do helps people? Oh, it, it, I think it helps people in some sense. Uh, you know, in a very physiological sense. I help people, you know, and I, I'm very well at what I do, mm -hmm. uh, especially in terms of producing the finished product. I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm good at getting where we need to go. Okay. Uh, and so I, I think in that sense, you know, the people that I work with, to uh, produce what I produce are satisfied with that result. And so I think I bring joy uh, to people in that process. Hmm. What was the second part of the question? Oh, well, the second part of the question was, you know, is it important to you that what you do helps people? And it doesn't fucking have to be, you know, no one's, that, that it literally doesn't matter at all, but I'm just curious if, if, if that is important to you. Uh, you know, I, I think so. If I, if I didn't do it well, I'd feel kind of unsatisfied. You know, if, if, if I got the sense that the people I was doing the work with weren't, um, weren't also happy, I think I would feel kind of like I didn't do my job well. So for me, yeah, it's really important. Are, okay, now your sister... I wanted to ask you if you felt like your sister's opinion is important to you, and I feel like the fact that you even called to talk about this indicates that to some level it is, but I'm curious, like, to to what extent your sister's opinion is genuinely important to you? Well, it's, it's important because... Um, it's important, actually, because sometimes she's a consumer of what I produce. Um, and so that's actually kind of a weird dynamic. Um, she's a consumer of what you, uh, does she purchase what you produce directly from you? Uh, no, no. Uh, it's, it's through a, a vendor, usually on the internet. Okay. Interesting. So she purchases what it is you produce, but she does not approve of you producing it. That's correct. Yeah, that's my sense anyway. Yeah. And I and I don't know if it's like, you know, because I know that she's probably watched or, uh, sorry, has consumed some of the products that I've produced. And, um, and particularly, you know, some of the products that have included me, like prolifically. And I don't know if her disapproval kind of stems from a result of, you know, me uh, not doing well in in the product or something. Like if it's my lack of, if it's like a critique of my of my performance in that product, or if it's just like an overall disgust, mm. you know. But sometimes I think it's the former because she's very, um, she's very adamant about that uh, um 
you know, and she sometimes she gets quite detailed uh, in describing the product um, and what she doesn't like about it. And, and it puts me in a very uncomfortable position because of the nature of my work. Mm. So. Do you, you know, there's this thing where like, how often do you even see your sister? Does she like live with you? Does she live in the same city as you? How often are you even around her? Yeah, yeah, we're in we're in the same neighborhood in California, so okay. we're like a couple blocks apart, you know. Because you know, I, you know I, but we, I, I mean, did... we te- no, go ahead. No, well, we text often too. You know, we have like an open an open uh, uh, messenger thread or whatever. So. Because, you know, I mean, you can love your sister and you can like your sister. You can be friendly with your sister. But if, but at the same time, you know, if every time you, or if often when you're interacting with her, she just makes you just walk away feeling bad, then I think it's okay for you to sort of slowly, like, you know, diminish the amount of contact that you have with her without, like, you know, damaging the relationship, if only because you want to feel bad less. Yeah, well, I mean, another wrinkle to this, too, is, like, I agree with that, but, you know, in my line of work, like, there's a really, there's actually a lot of room for career progression, and uh, I'm, I'm kind of moving into some different realms mm-hmm. in terms of some of the products I'm producing, mm-hmm. uh, and they're becoming increasingly complex and varied, um, and they're, they're very, very physically demanding uh, work. Um, and not just like with respect to, to like physical endurance, but with respect to uh, a tolerance for different uh, types of uh, instruments, I guess, put it that way. Um, you know, and so I, I know that she also uh, consumes those products. And so it's like by virtue of me expanding into my roles, into the into my career uh you know there's a chance that i I might expose myself to even more critique um and so it kind of becomes a question for me i guess of you know how much longer do i want to put up with with that Do do i need to cut off the relationship or not you know but um it's just a tough situation have you told her directly hey you know, I love you. You're my sister, but I don't want to hear it from you anymore about this shit. Um, no, I haven't been that open. No, it's been really kind of a couched, a couch. Okay. Because the other thing too is, I, I actually here's what you know. I'm sorry to keep adding to the complexity, but um, I kind of I appreciate that she consumes my products. Um. I, I think there's something to there's something to the critique that like I find comfort in because I know that she's watching my video or uh, consuming my products. You know, mm-hmm. uh, like I appreciate that there's people that are that are that appreciate uh, your watching work. my feet. No, pre- thank you. Appreciate yes, appreciate my work. You know. Mm-hmm. Well, man, you know, I think that the, the, and you know, we've all had to sort of do something like this. I, I think that being sort of direct with your sister, because look, dude, you know, if you're not telling her that something she's doing or saying is bothering you, she might not even know, you know? So I, I think that if you want yeah, this true. to stop, that's the number one initial way to go about it is just by letting her know that that this is bothering you hmm. yeah that's a good point i think being direct and open i mean that's certainly a value i have in my line of work like it's a very it's a very exposed setting so i don't know why i have such a problem with that like with respect to my internal emotions because i certainly don't have an issue you know being that open 
in other settings with other parts of myself, you know? Mm -hmm. So I don't know. There's kind of a weird conflict there, I guess. Mm -hmm. Well, man, uh, what'd you say your name was? Uh, Joe. Joe. Well, Joe, man, look, I wish you the best of luck. I hope that, um, you know, I hope, I hope you do end up, you know, letting your sister know how you feel and, uh, I appreciate you sharing. Well, thanks, man. And I'd, I'd appreciate if all your viewers can check out Brazzers.com as well. Absolutely. Have a good rest of the night. All right. Thanks, man. Call from Fame Auto. Hey, what's up? Hey, Hello? how you doing? Fame Auto! Yes. How I want a new car for free. Oh my god, I'm on the radio. <laughs> I what want, the hell? This is crazy. I want a new car. Give me a car it now. It feels like a Wondolato. Well, it's been auto repair. You have to bring I your demand... Car. I mean, a bring very your expensive. And I'll repair them. Free car. Any car? Or else I will be upset, or and I will whine uh, and have a tantrum if any, I do not get a free car. Do you mind? And what kind of car it is? A free one. Okay, because the one I have for free you may not have all the wheels. I want it to be blue. Oh, blue. Uh, I don't know that get those Joe blue cars, per se. Blue car. I want it. Why well, is it so surreal? Like, I called earlier, and I had your voicemail, and I left a voice message. I'm, I'm just getting off work, and I'm struggling with my dog right now. Maui, come on. What's up, man? Tell me everything. Tell me nothing. I'm a gecko. You're a guy. We're in the forest. Nothing matters. Some things, I don't like it. Oh, I, I, who cares? Who cares what I have to say? What's up, Fame Auto? Have you ever lied to anyone that you love? Yes, I have. Tell me about it. Which one? I've lied multiple times. Mo give me the most recent time. The uh, most recent time? Oh, my wife said, D did you leave the door open on the refrigerator? And I said, no. It was clear to me. And I said, I think you went out there to go get some cake. And she goes, oh. I thought I closed it. I was like, no, you didn't. You left it open. It's called gaslighting. Well, I, I lied. Like, probably a little bit of both. Is gaslighting and lying the, the, the same thing, or are they different things? Hmm. I think it depends on the context of the situation. Why, now, can I ask why you? Uh, why did you lie about that? Because I was, I was sitting, I had just sat down, and I got comfortable, and I did not want to get up again. Was it worth it to lie? Thinking back about it now, no. You sure? Uh... Yeah, because I guess I think she knew I was lying, but she just let it slide. And I used one of those pre like lying cards on the refrigerator door. I don't know. I mean, let's look at the pros and the cons here. The pros, you didn't have to get up to close the refrigerator door. True. I didn't have to give up my seat because she wanted that seat too. I know. I know as soon as I got up, she was going to take it. The cons. Help me out here. Uh, the cons is that uh, I can't use that light again multiple times. Probably she's gonna catch up onto it. Then I, yeah. I'll feel guilty if I, I start thinking right. about it. Let's see another lie. That's not even. I mean, look, I'm I'm sure, but look, man, you'll come up with more lies. Yeah. All right, so one time... You're not limited to just uh, that this, one lie. So I don't think the fact that you're burning no, a lie... That, that, one's, not, that one's not bad. But and here, fuck, I mean, dude, the, I, I, you can use the lie again. I don't see why you can't use that lie again. True. But it's coming to the point where, like, my wife and I, I know each other pretty well. So 
she knows when I'm lying, and I know when she's lying, so I have to get more creative, I guess, and I don't want to. Hmm. Um, do you, who lies more? As in men or women? No, between you and your wife. Oh, definitely me, hands down. What, uh, what's the ratio? Like, how, for every, like, is it like, for every one of oh. her lies, for every time she lies, how many, how many, how many lies do you have? What's the ratio of her lies to your lies? I think for every lie that she does, I would say I probably do like six or seven, maybe five. Really? That's a yeah. lot of lies. All right, tell yeah, me, was, tell me, you were, tell me, all right, so you had the refrigerator. What was, what's another lie that you've told your wife? Uh, another lie I told my wife, it, it's mostly about me being irresponsible, honestly. She tells me, like, oh, make sure you do the laundry before, you know, we go out and do stuff. And I'm like, oh, yeah, for sure, I'm going to do it tonight. And surprise, I don't do it tonight. Does that count? Say that again. All right, so... We alternate doing laundry, right? Yeah. And when she says it's me, she's going to do it, she's like, oh, I'm going to do the laundry tonight. Boom, she does it. And then she goes, oh, you, it's your turn to do the laundry. Do it. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to do it tomorrow at this time. And then I don't do it. Okay. So, pros. You don't have to do the laundry. Cons. Help me out. Oh, here. am I supposed to answer? Okay. I guess I get um I get to wear dirty laundry. Or I don't have things to wear. Look, um what's your name again? Oh, my name my, my real name is Farid. F A R I D. Farid? Farid, yeah. Farid. Farid, it's I mean it sounds like lying has worked out very well for you. Actually, that is a pro, yeah. You know, yeah, but I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like to tell people, hey, make sure you lie. Because then it sounds like you are just taking advantage of someone. And that's not that's not, that's not nice at all. I think uh, people should be genuinely true and uh, to each other. And Yeah. Yeah, but you could also just lie and get whatever you want all the time. Yeah, well, I guess so. Have you lied? No. Perfect. You're hired. Welcome aboard. Happy to be here. Thank you so much for calling. Uh, say say your name again. Farid. Farid. Thank you, yes, Farid. Yes, sir. Have a good rest of the night. Thank you. Congratulations. Hey, folks. It's Lyle here. I got a quick interruption. Because get this, finally, after many months of going unsponsored, I have an ad read. You know how podcasts, sometimes the hosts, the people will pay them money to read ads? We got one of those. We got an ad read. And I think that this product might be of use to some of you folks out there who enjoy watching and listening to a, a man in a giant green gecko costume float through the clouds and talk to strangers. Okay, get this. Today's episode of Therapy Gecko is brought to you by Delta Extracts Delta 8 THC. Okay, there's this thing out there that I just found out about called Delta 8 THC, and apparently it's like some sort of loophole for, uh, like, selling weed legally. Don't ask me how it works. I'm just a gecko. I'm not a lawyer. But um, Delta Extracts, are you looking to clear your mind or are you searching for the dankest of dank? Check out Delta Extracts for premium hemp-derived products. They have everything from carts, disposables, flowers, tinctures, and gummies. Whether you're new to enjoying cannabinoids or a seasoned consumer, they will have something for you. All of their products are 100% hemp-derived, making them federally legal. Again, I don't know how it works. I'm just a gecko, not a lawyer. But they are available right now at DeltaExtracts.com. That's DeltaExtracts.com. 
D E L T A E X T R A X dot com. Help support the show by using my promo code. I have a promo code with these guys. Help support the show by using my promo code to save on America's favorite recreational activity. Use the code Lyle35. Once again, promo code Lyle35 at checkout to receive 35% off. L Y L E. Three five. That's L Y L E three five at checkout to receive thirty five percent off. Good for the entire month of December. Some exclusions apply. Check your st- local state government for regulations. Again, I I I've been I've well I've tried the Delta eight THC stuff and um folks I, I I've told you all before I don't get high while I record the podcast and the stream, uh but I get high after. And I got to tell you, this Delta THC stuff, it's the real deal, okay? Uh, I don't know how the fuck it's legal. Again, I'm, I'm a gecko and not a lawyer, but uh, go check it out, deltaextracts.com. All right. We did it. We did an ad read. I thought it would never happen, but we got ads now. We can we sell things on here. It's exciting stuff, folks. All right. All right, enough of me. Enough of deltaextracts.com. Let's get back to the calls. Call from Rebecca. Rebecca. Hello. What's up, dude? Nothing much. I've just been hanging out. Rebecca? Yeah. What do you believe? Um. Okay, I was like deciding between two different options, but I think I know what I will talk about. Basically, um, I've always had this weird, like, conflict at the back of my mind that I've, like, depressed over the years, where I think that, like, every person I come into contact to is, like, low-key obsessed with me, but it's, like, weird because I also don't like myself, yet I have this ego thing going on where I think everyone I meet likes me immediately. It could be, like, romantically or platonically. It depends on the person. Hmm. And how long have you believed this? Has this been something that's been... uh, Since, like, elementary school, yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And what is it that makes you believe that people are obsessed with you? I would guess just because, I don't know. Like, I I think it's just an inner want for everyone to be either just even just basically just like me in general. Like, I find that to be my usual goal with new people I meet. So um, do you think that people are obsessed with you as a result of an intentional effort on your behalf to get them to be obsessed with you? Um, I think, or do you think it people definitely are naturally is, obsessed with you? It could be like a no effort thing, or it takes a lot of effort, depending mm-hmm. on the person. Usually, just like in the back of my head, I go, "Okay, I, I think I, I, I did it with this one." <laughs> and how does it make you feel that people are obsessed with you? I don't like that I think that people are obsessed with me. I think it's a very narcissistic type of thing to think about. And that's why I've like suppressed it all the time. And like <laughs> the only person I ever talked about this to is like my best friend. And <laughs> so it's kinda like flustering to just suddenly talk about it here. But um <laughs> yeah, Okay, um, when you told when you told your best friend about this whole thing, what did they say? She was like well, I mean, look at you. You know, like, she's supportive. <laughs> mm-hmm. I feel like if I told anyone else, though, they'd be like, um, anyways, so, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so you kind of got two things going on where you, like, feel like you think everyone is obsessed with you and you don't like that you think that. But then also you said that you want everyone to be obsessed with you yeah it's like a very 
angel devil type feel. Why do you why do you want people to be obsessed with you? I think just it's because it's like easier <laughs> that way. Why like, do you why do you think it's easier? Like for example, I was one of those kids who always like tried really hard to be the teacher's pet. Mm-hmm. Just because I found that if you made the teacher like you, you usually got off like with like quote mistakes a lot easier than people that you know they weren't like either the teacher didn't know very well or the teacher full up didn't like full out didn't like so like i would just like intentionally not do an assignment every once in a while just because i didn't want to and the teacher would like be like oh okay it's fine like you've never done it before you're good i'd be like cool so you think life is easier you feel like life is easier when people not just like you you're saying are obsessed with you yeah, like most of the time, that's what, you know, the weird part of me wants to think. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, because, you know, I'll tell you, um, what did you say her name was? Rebecca. Rebecca, I feel like life would be easier for you, not if everyone liked you, because that's, it's impossible to get everyone to like you, you know, where I feel like your life would be easier if you just didn't care what um, people thought of you at all. And while your friend who tells you, like, you know, it's true, people are obsessed with you, I think has good intentions. I think it's important... I think it's important for you that, like, your self-esteem comes from a place of within and not from everyone else liking you. Does that make yeah. sense? Because if it comes from everyone yeah. else liking you, then you It's like a validation thing, yeah. Yeah, and you gotta try to grow a sense of validation from within yourself. You know? Um, because it's... You know, I, I know you say it, 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 like, is easier, but it sounds like this is something that is, like, bothering you a lot this whole game of like wanting people to be obsessed with you thinking people are obsessed with you um and it's okay to like 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 yourself and like think that you're great you know but you should you should be able to and it's and it's hard no i'm i haven't gotten there it's like an ever ongoing process that a lot of you know that that takes a while to get to but uh you know you kind of got to start traveling down the path of building building that validation from within so that you can like yourself regardless of what anyone thinks of you. Because that's what will really make life, you know, quote, easier. Yeah, for sure. Hmm. Do you want me to bring up the other idea I was thinking about? Of talking about? Sure, what's the other idea? Are they related? Um, no, not at all. You know, maybe they are. What is it? Um, I believe that, like, when we die, like, there's nothing. It's just complete, like, darkness, no thoughts at all. Like, there's no chance at, like, an afterlife or whatever. It's just complete blackout. Well, shit, dude. What do you want to do before then? (sighs) Honestly, just, like, have a good time. (laughs) I don't know. Like, (laughs) for sure, like, I've always thought about it, too, or, like, I don't want to get so old where I can't take care of myself because then like you know what's the fun in that and like having this idea that oh nothing really will come after all of this I've also been in this place where it's like oh nothing really matters that much fun well well that's actually a great place to start for that other thing right because if nothing really matters and we're all gonna die at the end and we're all bonded together so beautifully by our shared fate of infinite darkness that uh, yeah. it doesn't matter whether or not people like you, you know? Yeah. All right. I think that's all I got for tonight. Well, thank you so much for calling and sharing, Rebecca. Oh, we have a good rest of the night. Thank you, you too. Call from Aqua Bear. Aqua Bear? Hello. What's up? How old are you, Aqua Bear? I'm 18. And by the way, it's Oliver. 
Oliver. That makes a lot more sense. But yeah. he's less cool. Yeah, it is. Tell me everything, Aqua Bear. I was just... I'm in high school, by the way, senior. Oh, you're so um, I'm going to turn you back up because you're a lot less loud than that other guy. Yeah, he was pretty loud. Wait, say something real quick. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay. All right, Aqua Bear, you sound not that loud. All right. <laughs> Oliver. Aqua, I'm going to call you Aqua Bear. Aqua Bear. What's up? Tell me everything. In my class, we're talking about this dilemma. Um, have you ever heard of the trolley dilemma? I've heard of the trolley dilemma. Okay. So, in this scenario, right, choose yeah. between one person mm -hmm. on a train track or five people, whatever. Yeah. And my problem with this, even if I didn't know this first person who's going to, you know, who I could switch the track and kill them instead of these five people, even if I didn't know this person or I did know them, I feel like the best option would just be to to just leave it alone you know because is it better to go you know let five people die i mean like just for your own sake is it better to go kill a person and then just get arrested and then just have all of this all of your life just crumble you know just right before your eyes like, well, I think it depends on which I, I think it depends on um, which group of people has the most valuable stuff on their person that you can steal from them <laughs> after the trolley hits them. That's how I would make the decision on that. Like who yeah. like is there like are there people wearing like expensive jewelry on like maybe like every maybe the five people are all like wearing, um, you know, just like plain old T-shirts and jeans or not. But then the one person is like has like a bunch of like gold and jewelry on them. I would switch the trolley for them so that I could take their stuff after they're they're gone. That's how I think about yeah. the problem. I mean, I guess. Yeah. Anyway, what's going on? You good? I'm chill. Yeah. What class is um, this? Oh, English. English class. I'm in AP English. You're in AP English. Well, what's your name again? Oliver. 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 Aqua Bear. Well, Aqua Bear, <laughs> um, get those AP credits. Uh, go to college. Or don't go to college. Um, I'll go to college. All right. Go to college. Do what you want to do, Aqua Bear. Don't let anyone tell you what to do. Not even me. Okay, I'm going to go by Aqua Bear now. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you for calling, Aqua Bear. Have a good rest of the night. You too. Call from... Ryan. Ryan, baby, talk to me. Hello? What's up? Oh, hi. Sorry, I was. my dog was giving me a mean look. I think because she's hungry. She, is that how she typically signals to you that she's hungry? Uh, so she's she's 17 years old, and she really kind of displays the same traits that my grandma did right before she died. She just sits on the couch. She just wants, you know, food, and that's all she cares about. She she you think she's deaf, but I've learned that she just ignores you because so her ear will twitch. So she hears you. She won't turn around. Like she can do tricks. She won't. She just won't listen. She doesn't care. She can do what kind of tricks? And I actually can she respect do? that. Uh, she can shake. She can sit. She can spin. She can lay down and roll over. But oh she's God, just like man. fuck it. She's like fuck it. I've earned the right to do nothing, and I agree. So mm. we just kind of let her, uh, let her let her run the house, pretty much. You know, the reason why dogs are always so hungry is because food is really all they know. You know, they don't really like, like we all have like our careers and our families and our blah, 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 blah. And, and you know, trying to do this, trying to, humans are always tr like trying to do things. Dogs, they don't even know that they can do anything except for eat. So that's why that, 
their whole world is revolves around that. The dogs That's don't true. try to get they an have, education they or no, no, they just eat food. That's all they have. That's all they have. That's why their world is so dominated by it. It's true. I kind of I kind of should model that low expectation lifestyle. Maybe I'd be happier. You know, dogs, people are like, oh, dogs are always so happy because it's like they don't have, they only have to worry food. They got food. They're good. That's it. I mean, look, it's 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 whatever floats your boat. I would. I mean, would you enjoy that? Would you enjoy not doing anything at all and just eating food and sleeping? No, 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 I wouldn't. No, you can't. I blame my my human brain prevents me from from being so simple and so content. Exactly. Exactly. You have to leave. I, uh, you have to go out the door. You have to do things. Go to go to school. Get a job. Blah blah blah. blah, blah go to fucking Spain. No, there is no dog. No dog has ever dreamt of going to Spain. But how do we know it's that? A uniquely human trait. How do we know? How do we not know? Look at a dog. Go look at a dog. Okay, I'm looking. Look I'm looking dog. at my dog. Is it dreaming of going to Spain? I don't know. You want to ask? No, it's not. No, I don't no. know, man. No, you I do mean, you're know. a gecko. You do it's therapy. Not looking, it's not. I'll tell you right now. I, I will tell you with a hundred percent certainty. Look at your dog again. <laughs> There's nothing behind those eyes. <laughs> you're right. It's not, it's, it's, your dog's not dreaming of going anywhere. Your dog wants food, and that's all that will be in her brain forever. Do you think dogs dream at all? No. You know when they're like sleeping and they're twitching and they're growling. Do you think anything's going on or like what's going on when that happens? Have you ever lied? All the time. Tell me the last time you lied. Oh, the last one got me in big trouble. Uh, I was seeing a girl for about two and a half, three months, and uh, and uh, basically from the get go, terrible liar. But uh, I, I I omitted some uh, some things about my life, and uh, that were probably pertinent to the relationship and being honest and I probably shouldn't have even been in a relationship but uh I uh I for a long time had struggled with drug addiction and in those in those few months like I was still I had relapsed and I had been using and uh, I just hid it from her but then I got arrested like two weeks ago two weeks ago and it's hard to it's hard to cover that one up I missed a football game that was at the local college and then I text her, you know, trying to get out at like, you know, 11, 11 at night release. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and I just kind of spilled the whole truth to her. And she was like, yeah, this isn't going to work. And I was like, I think you're right. So that was a big one. That was, mm-hmm. a, that was a big fuck up on my part there. Mm-hmm. Why, why were you lying to her that you got arrested? Well, I didn't, I didn't lie about getting arrested, but uh, there's definitely the whole lying about drug addiction i think you'll find a lot of a lot of addicts and alcoholics will either they lie to continue using because that's what they want to do or drinking or they or we me are so ashamed of the fact that we are the way we are you know because we don't want to continue doing these things a lot of us it's a compulsion we do it um when we have good days, bad days, happy, sad, we find excuses to use because there's something going on. Like we're built a little weird compared to everyone else. And uh, so you lie to because you're ashamed of it. Mm. So I think it's usually one of those two things. Are you are you uh, like actively seeking any sort of help for uh, your drug addiction? So, yeah. Yeah. So I went to a medical detox a couple weeks ago and it's kind of fucked like the whole like healthcare in America, like I switched from health, I switched healthcare about a month ago and it's not as good. So they're basically like, Oh, you can be here a week when I, I really needed two, three, four weeks there. They're like, well, you can stay four weeks, but it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you about $25,000. Yeah. So I could only get about a week and a half out of it. And then they transfer you to like a lower level of care. So I'll go, I have like individual therapists, and a psychiatrist for like medications, but I only go into a place three days a week, like during the day. 
instead of like full round the clock care at a facility. So I live at home and then three days a week, I go into a place and you know, did you do the group therapy, individual sessions, like uh, uh, lectures, yada, yada, that stuff. Okay. So of this, of the stuff that, uh, you know, you can afford, how is it, how is it going mm-hmm. so far? Uh, it's, well, I, well, I have to admit, it's kind of, I, I'd want to say I, I might be numb to the process because I, I, I started getting, I was an adolescent, about 14 years old. I started getting sent to treatment. So my first one, my parents, they, what happens is parents, I was in California at the time, they ship you out of state, like your parents. You literally in the middle of the night will have like two guys come into your room and handcuff you and like drag you to the airport and fly you. Oh, your parents organized that? Yeah, so I went how, to a place for a year when I was, I was 14. I was there from 14 to 15. It was a year, a wow. year long inpatient treatment. Yeah, how, how, how but I've done that. Career? It was these places. They're kind of not around anymore because they're kind of fucked up. But they call it behavioral modification, mm-hmm. and it's basically like dangling the carrot and, and, and punishment. Like you do something bad, and they had a lot of weird ways of enforcing enforcing things. Um, just like weird, like weird programs they put you on, like uh, to like try to drill therapeutic skills into your head. Or can I hear about some like of them? dressing? Okay, the 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 most like I guess dramatic would be they called it off the team, which was if you fucked up bad enough, and especially if they considered you like dangerous to yourself or like you were like self harm or like you're a risk to run away, they would dress you in lime green scrubs. And like you'd have like the same color like slide flip flop, kind of like jail, and you weren't allowed to talk to anybody, not even to staff. You were only allowed to communicate using your hand, your hand. So like you'd hold up fingers. So I think one, one was a bathroom, two, like two fingers up was supplies, like like a cram- you weren't allowed to have a pencil, only a crayon, because they were worried you're gonna like stab yourself or something. So two was supplies, three was medication four was laundry and five was emergency i think so you had those five options and you can no one would if anyone responded to you they would also get thrown off the team and you had to be 10 feet away from everyone else and you'd have like one staff next to you like you know arms length away all the time and so it was you just had like an that. intentional sort of isolation tactic yeah so i guess and at that point, at, at, during that time, you would also typically be assigned some kind of writing assignment. Like, I remember one time, well, whatever I was doing, I got caught for being just whatever, just oppositionally defiant to everything because I was 14. And I, they made me write, uh, like, maybe it was like kind of like an autobiography, but they kind of wanted me to like highlight or find certain parts of my life where I was doing similar shit to what I was, whatever the assignment was, but you have that to work on. Yeah. But again, you have to write it in crayon. So you get really good at like writing techniques where you like write with one side of the crayon and it kind of sharpens it and you flip it, you know, do a little twizzle 90 yeah. degrees and then it's still yeah. sharp. Yeah, you get it. So I got, if you have, I, I'm, I'm proficient with the crayon. You're proficient. Is that on your resume? It, it's that, yeah. Like, you know, like related skills. Um, yeah, these programs, they don't really exist anymore. You can, because mm-hmm. they're also just breeding grounds for, like, abuse from the facility. Like, like even though at the time they had, like, two staff to one, like, in a room alone, you had to have three people. So it was either, like, two clients and a staff or two staff and a client. But there was, like, always, like, places getting shut down for, like, like, like sexual abuse and just, like, just, just terrible things. This was in Salt Lake City in Utah. And, uh, but this was like a pat, this has been a pattern for like the last, like 14 years of my life. Like I've been to that facility plus another 15, 16 of them. And, uh, it just, it just gets tiring that lifestyle. And, uh, and then you like, you know, you're beating your head against the wall, like continuing to do the same things over and over again. And, uh. It's it's uh, it's hard to love someone like that too, you know. My sister is the same way, and because on the surface the things we do are terrible. We're, you know, we're stealing, we're lying, we're cheating, we're running around like we're like 
not showing up to family events or relationships or whatever. But at the same time, although like we are choosing to do those things, there's a component where we it, it's almost compulsive. It's like a weird mixture between the two. And uh, so yeah, for the moment, I'm doing pretty you know well well enough considering like I have about two and a half weeks sober off everything. This is like alcohol included. And then uh, well yeah, okay. I, uh, it, although I will say me me hunched over. In my on my computer, you know, dialing the phone over and over again is very reminiscent of like maybe like crack smoking. You know what I mean? I'm just, I figured out how many clicks it takes to reset the call. So I'm kind of like, you know. Well, I'm happy feel like a that uh, junkie over here. I'm ha- I'm happy that uh, I could I could give you some sort of uh, f- placeholder addiction. Um, mm. for the to you know tidy you over from the other one. I don't know what my therapist is going to say if that I uh, spent all night, you know, tonight trying to call a gecko to talk to. She might fucking think I'm using again. <laughs> so, well, isn't that what people do, by the way? Like, uh, like if you like to kick an addiction, you kind of pick up one that's not as bad, like drinking copious amounts of Mountain Dew or something like that. Oh, yeah. Cigarettes, coffee, candy is a big thing, especially alcoholics like you. Alcohol is ba- basically metabolizes as a sugar. If mm. you take that away, you crave sugar. So, like, mm. you'll see alcoholics like have a bunch of candy, or yeah, they tell you like don't don't try to don't try to dump all your addictions at once. Like, obviously the drugs, yes, but like, don't try to quit caffeine and cigarettes on top of it all at once. And uh, but yeah, you got to replace it. I mean, if you don't, you can't just take away the drugs and alcohol from someone. There's like it leaves a big hole in your life. Like the time it's spent for you to like get the drugs use them the time you spent getting high your friends that use if you take that away i mean you're just like a shell of nothing like you have to replace it with stuff you know so can i ask you something so over can i ask how old you are now 26 26 so you know having been like in these facilities for for so long and like what you're telling me about how you're just getting used to it like is there and congratulations on 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 two and a half weeks? Is well, there you. something that's like keep keeping you going? Because because it's it's clear that you're like trying. You know, it, it's clear that whether whether or not you've like fully kicked your addiction, like it's clear that you are continuously trying. You have not given up. You know, mm. what's keeping you doing that? Um, I will say. And there's been periods where I've had longer amounts of sobriety. The longest was I turned, just when I turned 18, I I got two and a half years. Again, like no drinking, no, I wasn't even smoking cigarettes, like no, no anything. And uh, during that time, I think beforehand, my problem was I kept trying to get sober for other people. So it's like, oh, I, mm. whether it was like I have legal stuff on my back or my parents are crying, my mom's upset and I keep mm. screwing over everyone I know. And I, I kept trying to get sober for them. So like I, I, things would get better and then they would be happy with me. But then it's like, well, mission accomplished. Like they're happy with me. Yeah. Done. Right. So I think it ha- I, ha- I had to switch it where my I, I have to I have to love and care about myself enough to, to like change for myself. Or else right. it's, it will never stick, and I think that's right. for a lot of things, not just not just addiction. But if you don't if you don't value and care about yourself, like why 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 bother going through all the effort to do all these things? When at the end of the day, I mean, it helps other people, but as a byproduct of helping yourself first. Of so course, that's number course. one. And how long you know is uh, so? You say that for the majority of the time, or for a long amounts of time you've been trying to get sober for other people when mm. around when do you feel like you made the sort of mental switch to be like i'm all right i'm gonna do this for myself uh that i think around 18 like i it, but it wasn't just hitting 18 I, I moved out on my own right before that and i think the combination of i moved to louisiana i kind of just like mm. threw a dart on board and was like fuck it we're going to louisiana and i think just being on my own and only having myself and spending so much time, like I went to work, I came home to my apartment with, I spent so much time with just myself. Like I didn't have friends yet or anything, like no family out there. Like I had to come to terms with like myself 
because everywhere I went, there I was. It didn't matter. I couldn't outrun myself. Of course. And like I just had, I just had to like face the fact that it's like like look in the mirror and like this is what it is. And uh, not in a depressing way, but I don't, I don't, I think I spent so much time just like running and avoiding that I never really took inventory and like figured out really like who I was enough to like to say like oh I actually love myself because I didn't even know if I just said oh I love I, who is Ryan I don't know I don't know and the only things I do know is like all the shitty things I've done and uh so I think it was just that like being on my own and not having especially my parents like bail me out all the time like right. fortunately or unfortunately my like my parents I grew up like well off enough where like mommy and daddy could come like bail me out of jail or get me a lawyer or go talk to the school and like beg them not to expel me or, you know, and, uh, yeah, I had to get away from that. It, no, you learn so much more about yourself in isolation. It sounds like, but yeah, yeah. I mean, there's, you don't have anything else to like distract yourself. So tell me, how's your outlook m moving forward? What's your outlook like? Are you are you feeling optimistic about the future? I would say cautiously optimistic might be the okay. best way to put it. Good. Uh, Good. I, I I don't have any. I ran out of excuses. You know, like uh, like I I know, like I know I can't like, like my my poison specifically was heroin. That was what that was what done like did me in the worst. Like that's what I always went back to, and I've just proven to myself with like some research and development, like it doesn't, I can't, I can't get high and live successfully. So I kind of hit a point where it was like, I either will die from it or I'll, I'll get sober. And I know what to do. I've done it before, like put together multiple years. So I know how, I know how to get there. And I really don't have any excuse except to just to go do it. And uh, so, I mean, I'm, I have good people around me, luckily that are still around. And I, I'm in a good living situation. It's stable enough. Like I didn't wreck my truck. Like I still have that. So I have, I have all the reasons and means in the world to uh, start, you know, getting things done, start doing some, some actual physical work on it. So I don't see why not. And, uh, you know, I have, I have goals, short term, long term. Uh, I'm young enough. Like I don't feel like I've like blown a bunch of time. Mm -mm. So, you know, because a lot of people are 50 years old, 50 year old heroin addict. Like I can only imagine like feeling like you wasted, you know, four or five decades. And it's like I'm sitting next to them and I always hear like, oh, I wish I would have gotten sober that young. Because all my friends are still partying. I mean, even though they're out of college, they're still still doing whatever. But uh, they're, they're normal and that, you know, they can they can put it down and go back to work. So oh, Ryan, man, um you know i think you're you're obviously a smart guy you obviously like you know have some some sense and a and a plan for yourself and uh man i'm 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 rooting for you dude i really am i um i think it's like i said i, I i'm impressed i'm impressed with you because uh i feel like after so many like tries you know, it, it it seems like you're still putting in the effort to help yourself, which is like the mm. most important thing, you know. So I'm 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 very very glad to hear that. Um, and dude, thank you so much for for sharing, and um, we we wish you the best of luck. Yeah, and if anyone else out there is struggling, uh, I just hope they reach out, tell someone, and. Uh, I love them and you can do it. I mean, it's, it's possible if I could do it, anyone can. And I've done it before and I know many people who have. So, you know, any, all the love and support to anyone out there struggling. And thanks for taking my call. I appreciate you. Anytime, Ryan. You take care. Have a good night. All right. See ya. Amy. Oh my gosh. Hello. What's up, Amy? What's up, Gecko? Amy from Arizona, you're chilling with your friend Amy. Lila. You want to talk about how hard yes. math is? Yes, I do. Tell me. Tell me how hard is math. Well, 
I'm uh, I'm not of your average college age. I'm a little bit older, and I started taking math recently, and I realized how how difficult it is. Like right now, I have to figure out like functions, and functions are super hard. And I was super. wondering maybe if you knew a little bit about functions, you could help me out. I know I you know I go to functions. Um... I talk to people, uh, you know, I'll pet a dog if it's there. I'll eat some tortilla chips. Um, right, yeah. I'm good at that, too. I go to, I, I, you know, I'm okay at functions. I'm not the best. I'm not like, you know, I know that I, I, I'm able to be like, you know, confident here because it's uh, it's just a digital thing and, you know, it's 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 my Twitch, whatever the fuck. But I, at an actual function, you know, I'm, I'm a lot, I, you know, I'm, you know, I'll... I'll I'll pick my spots strategically. Right, right. You're in so college? With, with you just went back like, to college? I did. I just went back to college. Yeah, I worked in nonprofit for um, 10 years, and now mm -hmm. I'm back in college to go into the medical field. So I need okay. to know all the math. Can I, would you be, and you know, I have to, but would you be comfortable sharing how old you are? I'm 40. My, um, my step Four zero. My stepmom became. Uh, my stepmom did a very similar thing at a, at a. I think she was actually even older than you, when she did a like extremely similar same thing as what you're doing right now, and uh, she became a doctor. You know, so. Nice. Fucking. fucking I mean, I'd like to be out. a physician's assistant, but we'll see. We'll see. Nah, it'll happen. It'll happen. I mean, how much do you really need to know to be a physician's assistant? You know, you gotta. You gotta know about the brain and the heart and the lungs and yep. pro probably something about the, the hands too, system. in case something goes wrong with those. Yeah, hands, feet, all those things, uh, all the things in between the hands and the feet. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <sighs> do you have yeah. any um? Do you have any like words of wisdom that you want to pass to the to the viewers tonight, Amy? Of course, Anything yeah. I mean, it's never it too late to do what you love. I think, like, um, you know, 40, sometimes people think that it's too late to pursue a different career. But I am um, I loved my past career, but now I'm ready for a new career. And I think I think anybody can do it as long as you have the, uh, you have the desire, you know? Beautiful. I like that. I like that a lot. What's your, what's your ultimate goal in life? What's your modest operandi? How do you... How do you how do you approach life, Amy? What's your philosophy? Um, I guess with an open mind is the best mo I can probably pass on to others. Is like you never know what's what's gonna come towards you, and you gotta you gotta you gotta face it with an open mind. If not, um, you're gonna be in trouble. You know. I like that. I like that. Um. Can I get some medical advice? Well, what you got going on? I, I I'm afraid that um, well I can't. I, it's hard. This is hard to explain. But I've been covering my face in a talc-based green paint for yes, several hours I every see week. That. We see that. Mm -hmm. And I'm kind of wondering, right. like, you know, based on your professional medical opinion, how how long do I have left to live? I mean, it depends on the level of 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 color that you're using and the amount of um, you lot. know, like I guess it's um, uh, artificial ingredients in there. But a good uh, a good baking soda rub, like you mix a little bit of baking soda. I would say like three tablespoons of baking soda with like a cup of water. Um, rub that on there. That'll draw out all of those toxins. Epsom salt is really good for that. You also have some witch hazel, which you can get from the drugstore really inexpensively. Um, that'll draw all that those toxins out. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Well, oh, you know what I do is I, uh, you know, that three-in-one shampoo, conditioner, body wash. I do. I do. Know I just, that. I just yep. go in the shower. I throw that on there. It usually does the trick. Gets it off. I mean, that's better than nothing, right? Um, but I'm not sure it'll get all the green toxins out of the out of the skin. 
Do you think there's like a like a do you think like it's skin cancer or something like that? I mean, cancer cancer is not typically caused by topical applications, but it's possible. Well, thank you for looking out for me, Amy. I'm just saying, like, maybe you want to go with a natural green. Like, maybe you can, like, do some kale or um, some spinach. And you can get the same color without the same uh, risk to your health. All right, I might do that. I'll show back. I'll show. I'll show up. Um, okay. I'll show up next stream with a bunch of shredded lettuce on my face. Love it. I love that. I love that look for you. I think that would be like a good example to set for the public too. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Amy. Amy, good luck. Yes. Um, yes. I hope to be under your knife one day. Um. Because I trust you. you. And um, I hope you have a good rest Thank of the night. You. Thank you. I appreciate it. And you have a wonderful night, too. Amy forever. Hello, Blake. Hello. How's it going, Blake? There's no way. No way. Are you super way? Are you fun? Way is Hello? Hell, actually extremely way. Oh, no. I'm about to lose my shit right now. I'm about to lose my shit. What's up, Blake? Tell me everything. Let me get, I gotta catch my breath, bro. There's no take way. Take all the time you need. I'll take, I'll take a sip of water. You want anything? I'm going to get myself a sip of water if you want anything. You're going to have to save a sip for me. Give me at least 10 seconds. Oh, holy Toledo. This is crazy. Holy Toledo. Give me one second. I love you, Lyle. What's going uh, on, man? Not much, Blake. How, uh, how, how might, what, tell, tell us. Tell us what's up. My heart's beating out of my chest. Ah, Lord man, take mercy. your time. Take your time. Well, to be honest with you, Lyle. Be honest with me. Got a little OCD obsession. Like to line things up, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, the wife, she's not having it. Mm. Mm. So yeah, I, basically, all I can tell you just uh, yeah, here, yeah, just bam, 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 yeah. putting everything in a row, everything organized, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's about it. Uh, how does it make you feel when you see things that are unorganized? It gives me pure satisfaction. You, you can't even describe it. Just beautiful. Just satisfaction. Oh, I meant how, how do you feel when you see things that are disorganized? Oh. Well, of course, the complete opposite. Just it just pisses me the fuck off. Okay, so how long have you been obsessively um, organizing stuff and putting things in line? You know, my whole adult career, basically. That's about it. Mm-hmm. And how long have you... I'm here with the gecko. <laughs> are, you, are you with someone right now? I'm sorry. No, no. I'm, I'm, I, you know, every time I hear you, you know, you're like, are you near anybody? So I ran to the basement for you. Oh, well, no, you, you, you're, I, you're I, look, I'm not, look, I'm not here to keep you away from your friends. You don't, you don't have to be alone. I was just curious. Oh, no, uh, no. Am I on speakerphone? I feel like I can hear happened. myself on the thing, although I don't know if this is No, 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 sir. No, sir. Okay. Just me and you. Beautiful. I gotta hear what you gotta say about Very this. romantic. Um, how long have you been with your <laughs> wife for? Not necessarily married, but just together. Seven years. Seven years. Okay. And... I wanna, sorry, I wanna look I at the chat right now. Is it bad oh, don't look at the chat. Don't look at the chat. We're... 
The only chat going on is between you and me. I need, your, I, need your, I need your whole focus. Be I need your whole focus here. I got you, but I mean, be honest with me. Is it bad? I'm not. I don't know. I'm not looking. It's just. It's just anyway. you and me. We're just chatting. No looking at the chat. Okay. All right. Um. Yeah. I die. I die right now. Me and okay. you. Bla Blake. You say your name was. Yes, Blake Adams. Being Blake. totally transparent. First and Adams. last name. <laughs> We're being transparent. Of course. Of course. Um. Blake. All right, so you met your wife. You've been with your wife seven years. I, I'm sorry. I know you just fucking told me, but you said you've been, like, obsessively organizing <laughs> things for three years. Yeah, uh, well, that's... We just bought a house together. That's, you know, that's when you really get the whole, you know, when you're together and you can see how each person lives, you know what I'm saying? Okay. And, okay, so you just bought a house together, you so know, you only it, recently... You know. You've only recently started living together. Well, we're going on two years, I mean, but it's okay. been rough with all the, you know, organization. I mean, I like everything to look like a chess game or, you know what I mean? Okay. And anyway. how would you describe her style? Is it, it Would you describe her style as actively disorganized or just simply not as anal about things as you it would look like you know where they dump trash in like a landfill that would be her style mm. Mm. yeah so actively di disorganized would be an understatement so you're just looking at pure slob basically mm. so, uh, you see where I'm coming from Mm -hmm. hmm. What do you like about your wife? What uh, what drew you to her and continues to draw you to her every day? I knew you were going to with these hard questions. That's not even hard. Um, <laughs> you know? It's a red... <laughs> I don't know. It's I, I a mean, red flag that you described that as a hard question. <laughs> yeah, I heard that. Um, but no, go ahead. You know... I don't, I don't know, Lyle. I mean, maybe that was our question. I mean, I, she she takes care of the things that need to be taken care of. How mm -hmm. about that? She t uh, you like her because she takes mom. care of the things that need to be taken care of. Well, well, you, well I don't want you to put words in my mouth. No, I'm not trying yeah. to. You know, go ahead. I want you to yeah. you, you, no, you answer no, the question. No, I'll, I'll be quiet. Do that. I know you. I've, I've listened to you for hundreds of hours. Eh, she, um, she fulfills the roles of the house. We'll, we'll just, let's go with that along. What you can tell me what I need to do. Because you're the therapy gecko. I'm looking for advice. Well, I don't know if I have advice, but I'm, I'm, I, I, I am interested in, uh, sort of talking about the situation. Um, Okay, so you like her because she fulfills the roles of the house. Do you guys have a kid? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we do. Okay, how old's the kid? Just, uh, he will be uh, one years old in a couple of days. Okay. And we went through IVF. I don't know if you, you know what in vitro fertilization is. No, what is that? Probably not. So that's where, like, you know, you believe the kids have to uh, artificially insimulate you and all that, pay all that money. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, so that's what we do. But anyway. You know... I, I don't want to take up your time, Lyle. Uh, no, you're fine, man. I'm, I'm kind of... Oh, I'm, I'm curious. Have you ever been to any form of... Um... Okay, so you, so you, you have you been like, a, have you been like formally diagnosed with OCD? He, I just grew up on Adderall, just like all these other kids have. I'm not gonna claim all that, you know. But I just have an obsession with everything having to be perfect. My whole house got to be perfect. Just, I just like perfect. You know, it doesn't. It doesn't necessarily have to be like per se perfect, but it needs to be organized. 
mm-hmm. all the time. And that's just me as a person. Have you talked to a, a real therapist about this? That's why I was asking if you had like a formal I would diagnosis. love to. Uh, I would love to. I would love to. Maybe Is I should. Money thing? You, yeah, I have, you, totally, you totally should. It sounds like... Um, you Did know, you say it's a money thing? Is that what you said? No, I was I was asking. Is it is it a money thing? Like, to, like, because you know, I know people fucking. Oh no! Nah, I just time. I just I just like, I just I just love it. You know, I don't have any problems with it. You know what I mean? It's just like, what's one thing that you like about yourself that you wouldn't change? You know. Well, well, you. That's pretty you much know... the same. Okay. Well, you know. There you go. Yeah. Well, no, no. Here's well, here's what I'm gonna. Here's what I was gonna say is like, you know, I'm actually kind of less interested in in because the way that uh, you know, at least you know, this was presented on you know the notes that uh from from what you told to the to the call screen or in a little bit from what you've told yeah. me was the way you presented it as like your OCD is like uh, the central sort of thing that's that you Oh you no it's it's like... ruining things for sure. But okay, but on the other hand, it's like and again, you know, I don't know you man, I don't know your relationship, but like on the other hand, it's like, you know, if if you can't, you know, if if you if you claim that you only like your wife because she fulfills the roles of the house. I feel like, and I don't know what they well, are, and I'm not making, I'm not trying to make any assumptions, but there might be other things going on besides just the OCD, and maybe it's not anything like, you know, horrible or tragic about about either of you as people, but maybe there's like, and, yeah, and I was gonna this, say this maybe there's incompatibility, but you've been together exactly. for seven years. I don't know, man. I mean, well, you know, I mean, time doesn't, you know, tell all. You know, sure. you, you figure it out, you know, later than sooner sometimes. I mean, you know, this is why I called you. I mean, they, you, everything, you, you know, one thing that I, I'm going to tell you this, I'm going to let you go, Lyle. Sure. You are so intelligent and you don't let a whole lot of people, you, you're, you're so smart, but you, you, you like to be shy about it. And that's one thing I love about you. So, well, thank you, Blake, man. I, I appreciate that. You. And, um, Hey, look, look, if man, you can, you gotta let these other callers in here. Okay, man. Go ahead. Well, I was gonna say, like, if you can, man, you know, I I appreciate all the kind words, but you know, if you can, man, totally go try and see a uh, a real therapist. I'm curious personally what they would have to say about something like this. Um, but you know, one thing, nobody. One thing, have you ever been to a therapist? Nobody's asked you before. Yeah, I've been to a therapist. I don't really like therapy. I like. I feel like uh, I journal for my therapy. Um, <laughs> you know, you I, get, I go to therapy. All right, well, I'm going to let like, you go, all right, buddy? All right, I'm man. I'm I'll gonna talk to you, you soon, Blake. Get Thank get you for calls, uh, right. calling. Thank you for sharing. All right, I'm going to see you. Right, love you, Lyle. I'm going to see you. Later, man. Thank you. Hello? Wh- Hello? Yes. Did I get through? You would- Yes. That's fucking crazy. Hi. I... Uh, I'm just hanging out. How are you? I'm also kind of just hanging out as well. I'm chilling. Oh, my God. Um, I'm waiting on a pizza right now. What kind of pizza? Okay, hear me out. Here, it's half, <laughs> it's half banana peppers on the left and then half pineapple on the right. Both extra on the toppings. Um, now, how do you know which side is the left side and which side is the right side? Because you could take it and then turn it, and then would that then be upside down? Or <laughs> how do you determine which is the right and which is the left? Well, I mean, with the structure of the box, like when you're opening it up, that's the front. And I chose in the app, because I have an app. And then when you open it up, it's like left is left, right is right. Do you... You, you, what if they put the pizza? What if they make it half, but they put, bo- they put it on the wrong halves? You know what I'm talking about? And you're like, and you call them back, and you're like, the banana peppers were supposed to be on the right side, but they were on the left side. No, 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 no. I forgive them. I forgive okay. them because, like, I, I I like being fucked over by the food service industry. Like they, I like being the person that they can like mess it up on, 
and then forgiving them. Oh, okay. You enjoy being in a position to forgive other people. Sure. Yeah. Does that make you feel powerful to deploy forgiveness? <laughs> um, no. I'm do you just say, like, do you go, I mean, I definitely, uh, do you go like, I'm, you know, I could be an asshole about this, <laughs> but I'm choosing not to because I'm merciful. No, I kind of always, um, yeah, no, I, I'm really easy to please. Like I, I'll put up with whatever. Does that ever backfire on you? Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about the last time that that backfired on you. Um, I guess the people I choose to um, be in committed relationships with, I sort of start like, um, I'm like, oh my gosh, I love the way you are as a person. I love the your individuality. And like, I completely put them on a pedestal and ignore any mistakes or any ways they... You would say they uh, fucked me over. Mm. And uh, listen, you don't have to get, you owe me nothing. You don't have to get specific with this at all, you know, if you're not comfortable with it. But um, would you be willing to talk about the, the last person, like the the negative quality that you did not, that you overlooked in them because you were focusing on the positive? Yeah. Um, my most recent ex shared a shower towel with his whole family. Really, just one communal towel. Yeah. And, like, the first time I uh, went to take a shower at his house, I was like, okay, like, well, you know, what's an appropriate towel to use? And he was like, oh, just use that one. I was like, oh, was like, like who, is it yours? He's like, oh, yeah, it's everyone's. I was like, everyone's. And then I told um, every person I knew about that that was the way he did things. After and what did you up. think about the fact that he shared a communal towel with his whole family? I was very disturbed because I, um, I'm kind of estranged from my own family. So that, like, that level of intimacy confused me. And also, is I just a, think it's weird either way. Is it a germ thing? I mean... I mean, like, the, I mean, how thorough do you get when you're drying yourself, you know? What did you say? And when you're passing is? it on to, like, your brother, um, you can call me J-Dog. You know, I feel like you should be honored, right? Doesn't this sort of mean that he's saying you're part of the family? Yeah, but, like, diseases pass through orifices, and... Like, that is an honor. Yeah, I mean, I... but also He's like, honoring you with the family disease. For sure, for sure. I mean, yeah. Whatever, whatever I mean, I used it. <laughs> whatever, whatever, um, whatever they have, I have it too. You know, it, it did make me feel like I had a real family unit. I was like, all right, this is, um, this is what we're doing. So you end up using it after all. Yeah, I didn't want to be rude. I didn't want to, like, you know, have that confrontation in the moment. I was like, okay, I'm just going to fucking use the towel. Hmm. Okay, so you went from... I'm I'm really enjoying the um, the character development here. You went from thinking it was gross. <laughs> um, you know, it's the way that even... I'm, like... I'm not going to critique him the same. Like, you, you were, like, we were saying, the food service industry, I'm very easy to please. I'm not going to complain. Hmm. I'll just keep quiet. I'm like, I'll just use the towel, you know? Right, but you went from, you know, using, you went from being adverse to using the towel, being, you know, a little bit like, you know, oh, I can't imagine being that close with my family, to you then used it. <laughs> and it sounds as though you felt like you then had a family of your own after going through that yeah. experience. <laughs> I love, I love, still love his parents. His brother was chill too, so I was like, you know what? <laughs> I'll share a towel with them. But, like, everyone I told about that was so... I think they were more bothered than me. Like, I think it was more fucked up to them. Um, and it made me reflect on my own decision to use it. That's very big of you. But, like, I, I wouldn't... I, wouldn't I like the character development. Like, yeah. Thank you. Thanks. I try every mm. day. Well, J-Dog, thank you for sharing. I hope you have a wonderful rest of the night. 
Thank you. You too. It was so great talking to you. Call from Tuba. What's up? What's her name? Tuba. Kiva. Kiva. <laughs> have we spoken before? We have not. Your name is Cubo? Kiba. It's like K I B A. Oh, Kiba. Is that your actual name or is that like a screen name? It's, uh, it's my name, yeah. It's a cool name. Yep, yep. How's it going? Um, Kiba. Do you like your name? Do you like yourself as a person? Do you like yourself? Uh, that's a difficult question. It is. It's a it's, I, I, for some people. It's a difficult I do. question. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, essentially, I do some parts of me, but you know, there's some there's some things I guess I could work on. That, by the way, that makes perfect sense. I think, um, you know, when you say essentially, you do. It's like the macro in the ma- I get it in the macro sense. When push comes to shove, you like yourself, but maybe uh, you know when you break it down into the units of. The days and the actions as individually, you're like, ah, I, you know, maybe could have done that better or something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, that's that's basically it. Hmm. Keep yeah, it. It's a bit tough, you know. Keep it. Have you ever lied before to someone? Absolutely. Who hasn't? Tell me, tell me about the tell me about the the, the most recent lie you told. All right, well, uh, it actually happened at work not too long ago. Mm. Um, so let me just give you a little background. I got hired not too long ago, maybe like a month and a half ago, max. And uh, I was so excited about the job. So I just told my friend about it. And uh, he got hired. We, we started working together, you know. He had some fun, too. And uh, there was a little mishap at work that... Uh, I, I, I kind of put the blame on him, you know, and he doesn't really suspect the thing. Mm. All right, so you got hired at a job. Your buddy got hired at the same place. You guys are palling around. Something you fuck something up. You blame it on your buddy. Yeah. Mm. All so right, what's it, your name? So it. Kiba, Kiba. Kiba. I forgot we did the whole thing with that. Kiba. Can you tell us yeah. what it is that you fucked up? So, we were working a shift together. Mind you, we're not even working near each other. We, it's kind of like a kind of sports job, sports oriented. It's like a daycare for kids, but we include sports and everything like that. Oh, God. So, um, Getting kids involved. Oh no, it's uh, it's, it gets a little bit worse. Dad, tell me what you did. I'll, I'll, uh, it wasn't, it wasn't involving the kids. It wasn't involving the kids. But I may have, uh, during, you know, closing down, dropped a shelf that may have broken a few things that were valuable. Then, you know, there was some questioning going on. I, I hauled ass to get out of there just so I wouldn't be suspected. And, uh, yeah. I might All have right. broken a vacuum cleaner that was very expensive. You broke a vacuum cleaner? Not not just that. It, it was a walk me shelf. through. Walk was... me through. It's a, Kiba, walk me through the things that were destroyed. Okay. Well, firstly, you know, of the, the vacuum cleaner, for one. Okay. Now, we just, we got inventory about a week before, so brand new toys and everything like that. And uh, about $500 worth of inventory. Okay, hold on. What? How how can one shelf contain $500 worth of toys? Well, we aren't the biggest facility so our backspace is not as big as it should be 
So if you make one small mistake and trip something over, it's basically game over. So yeah, we have like a bunch of toys, brand new toys for the kids to play with, usually the younger ages. And um, it just so happened that my friend was there at the wrong place in the wrong time. I have so many problems with this because, okay, how, first of all, okay, so you said that, the, okay, okay, $500, because so, here's the thing, $500 worth of toys, what children's toy, especially when you said for younger kids? Yeah. Like, also, by the way, I, I've, you know, I was a child, I played with, like, Fisher Price fucking yeah. xylophones. You could take a fucking Fisher Price xylophone and chuck it off a building, and that shit will still be good to go. What fucking children's toys are $500 and also fragile? Are they playing with like glass or something? What 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 are these <laughs> toys? No, uh it was like you know the plastic dinosaurs that are remote controlled and all that. Sure. It's, it's a lot of those and then it's like some ceramic dolls that are on there. Kind of Cera some... What kid is playing with ceramic dolls? Those are not. Those are for display. We. I don't know why we bought. We bought them for some reason, bro. Like, I fuck. I. Don't know I, what I, to tell you. I. You know what? I think so much of this is. I would. I blame the facility because. No, this doesn't make sense because, dude, these these t children's toys are not meant are meant to withstand. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Carnage. When I say the shelf, it, it's a pretty tall shelf that requires a step ladder to obtain most of these toys. Have you ever seen children play with toys? I fucking I've, will, I've seen a kid take a, one of those fucking remote control dinosaurs, and they're playing dinosaur, <laughs> and they slam that shit onto the floor, and the thing, and it's fine. Yeah, I, something about this doesn't thing. make sense. I don't know. I don't that, know why. I, that, something about this doesn't make sense to me. That's that's the thing. I There's thought so many everything was gonna be fine. As, I, as it was tipping over, I tried to save it. Like, don't count that out. I, I at least tried to, you know, keep it in place. And you know, I wasn't expecting it to break because you know ceramic dolls. Yes, yes, absolutely. What but the, the plastic dinosaurs. <sighs> That, I blame the very... facility for buying ceramic dolls for children to play with. You know, I do too. But the, as I digress, you know, I, I got my ass out of there and my son was, you know, putting shit in. And my manager walked in and he, was, he wasn't necessarily near it, but he was close enough to be suspected. And I might have told a little white lie to a... Not to exonerate fired. yourself. Yeah. All right. So, does your friend know about this that you lied? He he doesn't, and he just he he was fine with leaving with whatever reason. He didn't even try to fight the claim. And I don't know how to tell him. I don't know if I should tell him that it was me. Do you think you should tell him it was you? It, <laughs> So that first question you asked if I like myself, I feel like this is like this guilt inside. It's kind of just like pushing me over to not liking myself. I think it, I should tell him, but I am not necessarily sure. Well, I'm not going to tell you what you should do, but I mean... Is there, is there anything you can you can advise me to, Gek? Is there, is there anything... I mean, look. Should I just come clean? I mean, look, yeah, you should come clean. I think. Especially because... And by the way, here's the thing. It sounds like the stakes are very... By the way, you're in a... You're, it sounds like you're actually in a very lucky position, right? Because from what you've told me, the stakes are low. Because from what you've told me, your friend, when he got fired from the job, was not like, oh, that was the... He, like, he wasn't, like, fighting it and like, oh, that was my dream job and now it's over. And I, It sounds like, yeah. from what you've told me, that he was like, ah, whatever, I was going to leave anyway, something like that. It sounds like he doesn't care that much. It, it, I mean, to be fair, he was only there for like two weeks. 
Right. Okay. So, but so, would you say that it sounds like he doesn't care that much? Because then you're—I mean—that doesn't make you know anything more or less whatever morally, whatever the fuck. I'm not here to be a judgment on fucking morals, but um. Yeah. It sounds like it'll be easier for you then to break the news if he's not all that upset about it. It it, it does, but I just—he really also liked the job while he was there, but he wasn't opposed to being fired and taking blame for it. Which is cool, I guess. Dude, I mean, tell, dude, I'm, fuck I, it. Tell, tell the, the tell, tell, tell your boss. Uh, do you still work there? Yes. This place is crazy. I hate this place. Tell them that. T go in there and be like, you guys need to buy these kids fucking GI Joe, whatever the fuck, and not, you know, ceramic dolls that you got from your fucking grandma's house. Get some yeah, real toys in there. That's and by the way, I broke to those toys, and you it was your guys' fault for buying shitty toys like that. Get my friend back in there, and then you leave forever. That's what you should do. Go, tell your boss, tell your friend, and exo and just get the guilt away. That's what you got to do. You got to come clean. That's what I'll tell you to do, man. You got to come clean. All right. I, I, you know what? That does sound good. You don't want to work I've been, I've been I trying. I, it, it's really been like taking the toll on me. I've, I've been trying to, you know get it out there but they keep on bringing it up go in tomorrow tell the truth to everyone that's what i'll tell you all right Dick. i know you. it's easier said than done but do it for us i'll, try. I'll all try all right man talk to you soon thank you very much have a great day Dick. russell hi what's up russell so i got a good story for you Hit me. Hit right, me in so the me face start off by telling with your asshole. Fart in my face with your story. <laughs> fart into my mouth with your story. I want your story to be a big, wet, juicy fart that goes into my mouth. And I and not just and I don't want to just passively take your story fart into my mouth. I wanna <gasps> I wanna like <gasps> breathe breathe it in and inhale it. And I and I wanna keep it there. I'm not just gonna like I want you to fart your story into my mouth. I ho hold it in like this for a long time, as long as I possibly can. Oh. And then just and then digest it. I'm sorry, that was stupid. What, what, right. What's up? Tell me what you were going to say. All right, so question tonight is uh how have i sinned right how have you sinned all right so first off let me tell you where i am right now jizz your I, story I into my eye all. sorry we'll continue <laughs> all right so i'm currently living in my uh apartment with my fiance um my dog my cat. I have two bunnies here. Um, I'm living a really good life. I've been engaged for a little bit. I've been dating this girl for two years. Um, everything's going pretty great. Um, the thing is, her dad doesn't know. Um, and he has no idea that we were even dating in the first place. Mm -hmm. So, I mean... I don't know how to tell him. And the thing is, he's like, he's super abusive. And the second that he finds out, things are going to go south instantly. Well, I, I need, I need some more information here. You said that, um, you're date, you are, you're, no, you're engaged to this girl. You've been together with her for four years, you said, right? Two years. Two okay. years. Well, okay, so you've been together for two years. How long have you been engaged for? Um, about six months. All right, you've been together for two years, engaged for six months. Um, and her dad does not know why. Well, why is it such a? How old are you guys? So I'm 21. She is 19. She's 19. Okay. Okay. So her dad does not know that um she is engaged to you. No. And why why is it a problem if he were to know that? All right, so we went on a date when we were both in high school. 
right? And on this date, we went to a movie theater and um, we were there a little bit early. And, you know, one thing led to another thing in the movie theater parking lot. Um, cops ended up catching us and she got taken away in a cop, cop band or, a, you know, the, the squad car back to her dad. Um, so we didn't talk to each other for about a year. And then she reached out to me however much, however long ago. And I don't know, everything's been great since. And her dad doesn't know she moved out from her dad's house. Um, turns out I didn't know at, at the time, but she was living in a really toxic situation. Like, I don't know. I really don't even know the full story. I don't know the extent of it all, but I know it was really traumatizing to her. Um, she's living, she went to go live with her mom and that's how I got the opportunity to start talking to her again. So, um, so her dad does not like you because of that incident. Correct. Okay. Um, Regardless of my or anyone else's opinions on how you both as adults should live your life. Um, okay, if so, do you do you guys work? Does she does she live? Do you guys live together? Like, what's the yeah? Uh, the reason I'm at, the reason I'm, what I'm getting at is like your da- her dad does not like financially support either of you, D- does he? Oh no, absolutely not. Okay, then who gives no, a shit? No, she is actually, knows she's actually know. a, a CNA. She actually takes care of uh, schizophrenic people for a living. I don't know. It's pretty crazy. Well, so then why? Why is and, who gives uh, a shit what he knows? If he if he's not you know financially supporting anyone, and you know if she doesn't have a great relationship with him to begin with, you know why? Why does it matter what he does or doesn't know? You know. Yeah, I guess that's true. Um, I mean, you both, um, well, all right, so I, she I has guess, a job, I guess I would say. she's a caretaker, and then do you have a, do you have a job? Yeah, um, currently I'm working at a restaurant called, well, I'm not going to name the place, but I'm, I'm working at a restaurant, yeah. Well, dude, I mean, look, you both are independent adults, financially supporting yourselves, I, I, you're free to do whatever you want, you know, who cares what her dad thinks? Yeah, that's true. Um, I mean, I guess the one thing that I would say is that she's she's paranoid about what her dad might do when he finds out. Um, mm-hmm. There was incidents in her childhood where he had like threatened uh, gun violence towards her mm-hmm. and just things that CPS should have gotten involved with it's just not good stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, does uh, does he know where? Does he know? Is, does she keep in contact with her dad often? Um, she talks to him every once in a while just to like keep tabs with him to make sure that you know he's not doing anything hurtful to any of the other children or anything like that. Are you are you afraid that if he finds out that you guys are getting married that he'll like come to where you guys live and hurt you? I'm afraid that there's a chance he might try. Well, I'll say one thing. Um, you know, uh, and this is uh, this is hard for me to say because. Okay, what I because I, I'm not I, I I'm not I'm not committing to this as my like take on this or whatever, but I I hate regardless of regardless of what I personally think about getting married at 21. I hate to see you make any of your decisions in your life based on, like, fear of some guy's violence, you know? Um, uh, even even though I understand the fear of that violence. Uh, I don't know. I don't want you to live your life in fear, man. What can you... I'm trying to think what you can do. I mean, to be honest, I'm not really scared. It's kind of like if he finds out, he finds out, you know, like okay. I live my life just day to day doing whatever I do, you know, 
if it happens, if it so happens that he finds out, I'll deal with it then, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, shit, man. Well, then good on you for living your life with no fear. Or, you know, not with no fear, but, you know, not letting that control you. Yeah. I wish you Thanks. both the best of luck, man. Thank you. Beautiful. The wedding is in uh, 12 months. Hell yeah. You know, good luck to you guys. Thank you. Have a good rest of the night, man. You too. Therapy goes on.